where because like there was a a double wave ye yellow flags in one sector and I was oh. expecting to see like a crash oh, or anything. I guess we'll get back <clears throat> to that. But it was actually a dude on the track. I hear the Skype ring. Hello, who's that? Are we are we are we here? Wait, hang on a second, Mike. What's going on with the sound? I don't know. Oh, sorry, not you, Mike. Uh, Mike here. Mike, this guy. <laughs> Mike over here. Hold on, we gotta figure out some things. <laughs> we haven't done uh, Skype in a little while. Mike, how are you? You're calling us from the states, are you? Uh, doing good for uh, I think what is it Tuesday? <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. O only Tuesday. Um. I I've been kind of a. Uh, it's been a tough week recovering from that week down in Coda, so. I guess you all dried off now? Uh, just about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Did you see what happened after you left? The storm got even worse. Yeah, I saw the storm that happened over the weekend. It looked uh, much worse than when I was there. <laughs> yeah, it was flooding, walls collapsing, buildings flipping over. That was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hang on a second. Do we, that was a little better? Yeah, yeah. Should be fine now. Should be fine? Yeah. Mike, I Okay, let's let us let us say hi to Mike again, uh, uh, and, and and introduce so Mike. Actually, uh, Daddy, you have the introduction from Mike. <laughs> sure, Mike, yeah. we we are live on the internet right now, so yeah, we're live on the YouTube. Yeah, we we met Mike in uh, Montreal. Had a great time. Yeah, we hung out for a bit. You were marshalling there. Where where'd you marshal there? What what corner? Six and seven. Or uh, this year I was at turn ten on Friday and Saturday, and then turn four for the race on Sunday. All right. Then. Is that a is that a Coda or a, or a, or a that was for Montreal okay, yeah. for Coda I was turned seven all weekend. Nice. You said you were the the blue flag man this weekend or for Coda. Yeah, I was blue flag marshal there. Although I was doing, um, we rotate a bit, so I was doing flags for F one. Uh, I was doing the LED boards for the Porsche Super Cup. Oh wow! And, and for the historics, I was just working response. Oh, what, cool. what what does that mean? What does the response mean? Uh, response means I was going to be the first person out in case one of the historics went off. Oh. Um, so basically, I was I was at the cutout from turn seven. Um, basically, we had no racing with them, so it was just stand in the rain and watch cars behind a safety car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, horrible. That, that, yeah, that is so bad. I mean, especially but, you flew down there to 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 Marshall, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean. Take it or leave it. You know the weather is always going to play a factor in race weekends, and yeah, I think in twenty five years that might have been the strangest weekend I've ever worked. Did you did you come prepared at all? Like were you were you pref expecting such um, a torrential downpour? The, I have rain boots, but they were ten years old. So I uh, <laughs> the night before I flew down, I went to REI and bought some more. <laughs> nice. Um, unfortunately, the hundred fifty dollar rain boots I bought did not hold the rain out. Oh no. Um, oh, wow. um, I did have to buy rain pants, which I had shipped to my hotel because it was too late to buy them here. <laughs> but uh, uh, rain gear only keeps rain out for so long. For yeah. sure, especially if it's all day, like it was, like it seemed to have been. How, like how crazy, man! They, um, I, I mean, in the in the TV screens, I mean, I I, I did watch uh, all the three, well, all the, the sessions. The one on Saturday that eventually never happened, kept getting red, red flagged, um, and and the one on Sunday, and and it just seemed like he just kept going and going and going especially in the saturday like how was like on the tv like i was i was still sitting at home in a nice <laughs> uh, nice room you know petting my cat or whatever but it, 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 that must have been brutal for you guys it was a tough day because uh the rain was different on saturday the rain saturday was we had a lot more rain okay but it was more steady um the rain that we had on friday was more like think like forrest gump rain where he was talking about uh Mm -hmm. Upside down rain, sideways rain, <laughs> stinging rain. Um, we we actually were evacu you know evacuated from the course on Friday. Wow. Um, Fifteen minutes before yeah. F one, uh, for their free practice too. Yeah. And uh, they did a very good job of coming around, and picking us up on buses, and um, got us around to the other side of the track and got us under cover underneath the tower. Um, and that's when we had the severe thunderstorms come through, and we actually had a small tornado that came down over the over the grandstands. What? Oh, what? There was actually a funnel cloud that came down over the top of the main grandstand Whoa. on the outside. And then uh, there was so much thunder and lightning and, and rain. When we were back on the buses afterwards, the bus driver couldn't even see uh, five feet in front of him because it was coming down so hard. Wow. Um, wow. Saturday was more of a steady rain. It just didn't stop. 
True. So it was kind of a hard day because they delayed – obviously, they delayed qualifying, but they they put it off for about two hours. Right, yeah. They, were, they, yeah. they, they kept delaying it for half an hour and half an hour because uh, yeah. the, the, so we're the deal the wasn't the deal that Charlie – wasn't the deal that Charlie uh, Whiting basically like just was like, hey, I don't want to be played like a fool by the weather before, like like what happened in Japan. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, they did come around and get buses for us about two, you know, hour and a half, two hours later, and then um, probably the coolest thing was uh, about three thirty, about half hour before they called it, they we drove all the buses into the, into the uh, pit lane, and um, all the fans that hung out, all the drivers, all the crews came out and were cheering for all of us coming in on the buses. Nice. So that was nice to see. No, th- th- thank you very much, uh, uh, Mike, and to you and 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 your colleagues that uh, that that do the marshalling in these races. Uh, uh, for for our listeners and viewers that don't know, uh, yeah, uh, if volunteer. you don't know yet, yeah, it is a volunteer, volunteer job. Work, yeah. You don't you don't get paid for this. Other than I guess like what what do you get to keep? You get to keep uh, the the the, the tabard. <laughs> Oh yeah, I always keep my tabards. So I've got like I've got six of them now. So nice, <laughs> nice. Six, um, six F one races you've done. Yeah, that was my sixth one. So nice. Oh, cool. Second and, one uh, this year. Yeah, actually, I got I got my first official invite to work Silverstone next year. So no way. Oh wow. Are you gonna I, go? I'm not sure if I can make it happen, but we'll see. What, uh, we'll see what comes around. So it rains. It might it, be wet there too. Yeah, it rains a lot there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. Like I said, in 25 years, I've worked some pretty rainy weekends, and that was that was one of that's one of the ones I won't forget. So. Wow. I uh, it, it looked it looked intense. It it did produce when it did get going. What is? But to, to me, it was the most exciting race of all year. Yeah. Oh, but it was by far the best I've seen yet. I mean, the fact I knew that when they were out on doing their reconnaissance lap half hour before the race, that uh, I was already starting to see a dry line, you know, through nice. turn seven, turn eight, right there. Yeah. And I said, these you know these guys are going to be on the slick tires in about fifteen twenty laps. You know, and, and sure enough, you started seeing. Uh, I think it was I think it was Ricky Arda and one of the Sabers that went first, if I remember right. Yeah, it was still a, a bit on the limit, but they got it to stick. Yeah, I mean, it was still it was, some of the guys were slipping around pretty good. In fact, uh, Vettel came around the first time on his slicks, and he went off. I think he went off twice at seven. At your corner. Um, yeah, just just nice. over just over the uh, astro turf. <laughs> That's amazing. So, well, go, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say so so. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but so tell us how the uh, this blue flagging works. Yeah, please. So w- when uh, is it up to you to decide? Uh, you gotta let the, you should let be letting this guy pass, or do you have it in your headphones that? Yeah, they, it's, are they it's, telling it's you the turn seven? Discretion. I'm not on a headset. Um, oh, okay. Usually, the people that have more experience blue flagging, they'll have blue flagging F1. Um, just because it's it's a very important job for the drivers. The drivers will yeah, actually learn sure. to trust you pretty quick. Oh, I remember um, we you always, were telling we us. We always keep the same blue flagger on each turn for the whole weekend. That way the drivers learn oh. mm. that flagger's tendencies. Oh, okay, okay. So, so some flaggers may cry wolf a little bit more where I really try to make mine important. But um, turn seven was a tough spot to blue flag because they were coming out of out of the S's pretty darn quick. And mm. I've only got maybe a tenth of a second to make a decision. So I am I was really trying to key off of what turn six was doing. Do, do, um, do, do do you go basically and you see the the the, the Marusha color scheme and like you're like yeah, <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, I felt bad <laughs> because about ten laps into the race, I took my first mulligan when the, um, uh, one I think it was Will Stevens that came around. He had one of the Sabers behind him. Oh yeah, you know they were running seventeenth, eighteenth, right? And mm. the Mercedes were only about six seconds behind him, and I really thought the Mercedes would catch him a little bit quicker, but they actually went by. I I try to time in the back of the pack. So I, at one point I timed, I timed the Sauber at like uh, ten seconds in front of the Mercedes, and it actually took Rosberg about seven laps to catch him. Um, wow! So about that seventh lap, I threw my blue flag out as soon as he came around that corner because I was expecting to see the Mercedes right behind him, but it was it was the manor that was behind him. So I was like, well, that was a crappy blue flag, but <laughs> you know, you don't get them all right. Yeah, but, I guess you can't. That's amazing. I th- I actually like had no idea that you that it was at your discretion. So um, I, I'm I, I'm guessing on a dry like in, in dry weather, it just must be that much easier to see like because you can see like who's going quicker than who. But yeah, on, on a wet I've, race, I mean, I've done I've done really good at you know when I teach new blue flaggers, I try to teach them to remember if they can memorize the the last five cars and the first five cars, 
um, that'll make your life a lot easier when you're trying to figure out where people are. And yeah. usually within about 15 laps, you're going to start to get in the groove and you're going to know where everybody's at, yeah. um, except for when everybody starts pitting. So, then, then I rely on, I rely on my communicator to let me know who pits, okay. who's back out. But um, short, long story short, blue flag, we use it a lot during practice and qualifying. Uh, just because you don't know who's on a, on a slow lap coming in, who's on a flyer, uh, who's just scrubbing in some tires. Um, mm-hmm. So we use it quite a bit for that. Uh, the race is just for back markers only. So for sure, any car is racing for position, they're racing. So, so that information is all up to you as well. You don't have uh, a screen or a chart in front of you showing you who's being lapped, how many laps, how many seconds, like you see on the TV with the, uh, the, no, the not too much. I mean, practice, I don't need it too much. This is just the race when I need my communicator to, to feed that information to me when things change. Oh, okay. It, it, so, it, so. Now this communicator, that's, that's a device that's standard for, for, for the marshals that are flagging. Right. And it just, uh, it, uh, like who, who feeds that information? Race control? Yeah. We, we talked to race control Okay. and we're, you know, in this case we have an American, uh, American guy named Jimmy Swintall who was starter for cart for a number of years and, our chief observer. So he's on the other end of the line that we're talking to. And he works. Um, so, he's, so F- he's got, you know, FIA and FOM right there next to him. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I was going to say, so, so he's, he's kind of working under Charlie Whiting, the almighty. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Yep. So, so they'll come on the radio and they'll tell all, they'll tell all the communicators. He'll come on and say, okay, everybody, uh, uh, you know, Mercedes two is starting to catch the back of the pack. Let's start helping them with the blue flags. And so, Communicators will let, will let their flaggers know what's going on, so so if the leader goes off somewhere, he'll tell me that, that somebody went off at ten. Um, most of the time, I talk to my communicator and I tell him to let me know things I need to know, right? And not not so much everything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Position changes, that kind of stuff. I need to know those. So, one thing that we talked about, Mike, if I could uh, just just bring it bring it out of the uh, the U.S. Sure. Grand Prix that I thought that I thought was very interesting is that when we talked in Montreal, uh, you know, having a, a very pleasant beer with you, um, uh, you, you basically told us how it it kind of works, um, in in parallel as. You know, you would say a driver's career, like as a, as a, as um, like as a, as as a person that's allowed to um to, to volunteer and to um and to officiate these events. Uh, it is a volunteer job, but I couldn't do it because you have to go through the steps. You have to you have to officiate uh, lower level events. And and uh, could you talk us a, a bit about how how that works? Like how like how did you get started? I got started with my uh, my local region, which is the Oregon region, SCTA. Mm-hmm. And that was like back in 91. And uh got involved from a friend of a friend. And uh, I actually worked pre-grid for about a year. And then uh, they were short turn workers one day, so they pulled me out to a turn. I never went back to pre-grid. Nice. Uh, once I realized I could be out five feet away from a screaming car going by, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is pretty cool. I think I'll stay out here. But um, no – in Canada and the U.S., there's a lot of different ways you can go to get into club racing. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget the groups that are called up there, up in up in like Toronto and Montreal, but um, it's club racing in general, right? Club, it's, yeah, it's club racing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a CTCC. But just, get, just look for your local club and go out and volunteer. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, you can be most people can be working pro races within the you know within their first to second year. That's amazing. Um, obviously, they can you can probably do F1 within a year or two, but they you know most places then when you register, they want to see some pro racing background experience, whether it be, you know, some of the Canadian sedan series or, you know, Indy cars or some of the sports car stuff, sports car, you can really get a lot of time in. Well, so, they, cause they, cause they do endurance. Have you ever done uh, endurance? What's, what's your endurance background? Uh, my first real, I've done some 24 hour events here in Oregon, just wow. like club racing stuff. But <laughs> my first real 24 hour event was the Rolex 24 in 2014. Whoa. And, uh, that, where, that was a great was experience. That in fact, uh, I just booked my airline tickets to go back again this next January. So that's awesome. Where, where, where does that happen? That's in Daytona. Oh, nice, nice. That's a, that, so. What it, it was like, a choice of that or Sebring and Daytona will just work out better for my schedule. So Sebring is another like is, it, F1 race at Sebring in the very early days, didn't they? Yeah, I think it was a lot. I can't remember if it was the fifties or the sixties. But I think it was maybe one or two races, and that was it. That's, a, it's, that's an interesting track still to this day. I think F3, they do some some stuff there, Formula yeah. 3. 
There, there's not a lot of stuff that can race there because uh, Sebring's pretty bumpy. So yeah, true. Mm. You know, the sports cars handle it quite a bit better than anything that's open wheel. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What is what is your like your preferred uh, event to uh, yeah to marshal at? Uh, would you say F1 or would you say sports car racing? Sports car racing. I mean, I love Formula One. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but. Uh, Sports car racing is some of the most fun weekends I can work. So, oh yeah. Um, if I had to pick one, I think this year was working um, working IMSA down at Laguna Seca. Oh, back in May. Actually, a lot of people do. A, a lot of people still believe it or not don't don't know about uh, IMSA. About the you're, you're talking about the Tudor. Um, yeah, the uh, Tudor series. The Tudor series. Yeah, uh, which I guess will now be the the WeatherTech series. Is that what it's? Called? Oh, that, yeah. I guess they changed sponsors. But, yeah, they're changing sponsors. Yeah, but what what it is? I mean, and and obviously, I've only uh, well, I've only seen a, a, a couple of races. Um, but I I thought the whole idea was phenomenal. They basically took what was um a bunch of series before of sports car racing and combined it into one. Right? Am, am I right? Is that sort of what happened? Yeah, because well, yeah, because it used to be IMSA, and then then Grand Am came along. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was the Grand Am series under NASCAR that ran for fourteen years. So it was a split that was very similar to what we had in IndyCar. Right. Yeah. You know, so we had two, two different sports car groups, and then they they finally joined forces again a couple of years ago. And that's a tutor, yeah, or whatever. It's going to be yeah, it's super series now. So it's you know Daytona prototypes, PC, GTLM, GTS. And I, what I find so cool is that they all have, like so. Uh, I, I think this is uh, this is what it is, but yeah, they all have uh, LED displays on the side that give you so much information. Uh, as a spectator, yeah. is amazing to see because these cars on the side doesn't it doesn't just give you um, uh, their position, but it tells you like just just by looking at it, you can tell what class they're racing on, uh, right, Mike? Yeah, they have different uh. colors, and they're, they're just, it's like a five millimeter thick, like a seven inch by seven inch sticker that's on the side of the car. Yeah, and it'll be a different color for each class. So like GT GTLM is green, uh, PC cars are blue, um, Daytona prototypes are red. Uh, then the, then they'll, they'll actually say their position number on the side of the car. So was, if they're running second oh, in class, it'll have a two I, on it. Yeah, okay, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah and it gets updated real time, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 and unless you wonder, why doesn't F1 do that? I, at least just for newer fans. I don't really need it because yeah. because I, I know how to how to read the screen. But if they wanna if they wanna get new fans into the sport, they should really push to do something like that. Like how much how much yeah. weight can that add to the car realistically? Especially yourself, like that, I think even that would be I, tougher for those cars just because you know. You see those guys wipe those cars down when they come in from two laps being out. True. Um, any any matter of dirt or any any change in the chassis shape, you know, affects the wind right. going along the car. I think I think if anything, if they wanted to do better for the fans, like watching on TV, it would be like you see in like the video games where they have like an overlay showing the position of the cars on the track. On the track. Yeah. They do that like sometimes they do that like at the last like two or three laps and only about only for two or three cars. They show like But the I, top cars fighting for the. The no, the, they should. What one hundred percent, Mike? I agree with you. They should do that. Like actually, you, 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 uh, our the other Mike here. Uh, you that, that was one of your first questions. Uh, Mike uh, here, opposite to us. Uh, I don't know if you remember from when we talked in Montreal. He's oh, new yeah. to F one. Brand new, brand spanking new. <laughs> this year, S since the season, since yeah, Australia, since, since or just uh, before. we started this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and 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 it's been great. But there's definitely something that. I think that it could be well, I don't know how you see it could be realistically but the sport F1 could do to 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 get new fans more involved or at least to to break that uh that really sharp learning curve that you have to go through. Yeah. Actually you, you... like th this weekend again uh, we did uh we got together at a bar with some people from the Reddit community. Mm -hmm. So we had about 25 people there to watch the race together. And uh, my, my friend was there who hadn't really watched the race before. And she said, how come they don't do that? Why don't they show like an overhead map of all the cars? And I was like, yeah, I guess, I don't, I don't know. You just kind of get into it and learn what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you eventually figure really, it out. But don't really need they, it. They need to do what MotoGP is doing. What, what I mean, are they doing? MotoGP, MotoGP has taken their broadcasting to the next level. Um, if F1 could do that, it would be amazing. But I just don't think it's going to happen with Bernie. So. <laughs> Uh, what, so are, what, are, are they taking it like streaming digital? Stuff? Oh yeah, Model GP is doing everything. They're they're streaming. They're doing interactive displays when you're watching the racing. Um, they're so I mean, just uh, their coverage is just amazing. F1 I've never seen has like it. 
F1 has the Formula One app. You can get all the live data, passing oh. timing, and all that. But yeah, but you have it, to you have to you have to give money directly into Bernie's pockets. Yeah, it, it yeah. was <laughs> kind of free a couple of years ago, and then they wanted you to pay for certain data, and it's just, I don't know. I I mean that it's, don't let me get it me, sucks now. Don't get me started about that. Yeah, F F1 I think it, to they, they're not they're not doing everything they can, that they can to to utilize no. the modern technology. Um. Mike, do you have did you have an opinion at all uh, about the Mexican Grand Prix? Did you watch it? Amazing. That's just that's all I can say. It was just amazing. The, like, the whole production was good. How how much I fun does that look to go to? Everybody away how fast the cars were. I mean, I knew they were going to be fast there, yeah. but I don't think anybody realized that they're going to be doing two twenty down some of those straights. So yeah, two 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 sixty four and uh, for the kilometer and hours people. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, the, it was it was officially faster than Monza. And Monza is a darn fast track. So, well, the tempo of speed, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not anymore. Would you want to? Uh, would, would, would you want to go Marshall there next though, year? Like the, like the commentators were saying, it's like a it's like a go kart track for F one cars. Mm. I mean, you saw those guys how much they had to work the steering wheels. And uh, how much they were trying to do whatever they could do to keep their brakes cool. Every single corner, uh, you you could see at least somebody slipping. That is a yeah. lot of the fun of the go karts too, is that they do slide. <laughs> but I thought it was an amazing race, and I love what they did at the end. I oh. mean, that that had to be one of the best podium celebrations I've ever seen. Man, they they really like they pull a uh, they pull off all the stops. It was awkwardly placed, like so far from the actual pit lane, but it doesn't matter. They did a good yeah. job. Yeah, I mean, they, and they, the, they put the it in noise, a place man. where thirty five thousand fans could watch watch the ceremony. So. That's right, because yeah, if like in Montreal, for example, we had to walk from basically the other end of the track, and by the time we got there, like they were basically just doing team pictures. The the, the podium ceremony was over. Yeah, it was such a long distance. But yeah, getting getting one of those stadium seats, and actually, you know, well, get, it would be like the same as sitting on the first corner at at uh, at uh, the Canadian track, but you got to pay five hundred bucks to sit there. Right? But you know, yeah. so, so you know how like they they have the the, the really really tall ones of, of the the stadium. There is one of those grandstands in the stadium sections in Mexico. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you noticed it too. That um also the back of it is uh, the the main the, the start finish straight. Oh yeah. So if yeah, you get one of those weird. corner seats right at the top, not only you. Can, I was only... thinking the same thing when I was watching. I was I was saying. Whoever the dude is in the upper far right corner of that grandstand has got the best seat in the house. In, in all of F1, period. Yeah. <laughs> because you can see the start yeah. finish straight and that stadium section. Another good yeah. spot was uh, at the exit where they come, came out of the stadium, right at the, the gap there at the top. They had a camera there and they had a few shots where you could see them come through the stadium. Oh, yeah. And then you could peek over the edge and see them exit around the, the new Mansell turn. Oh, man. Yeah, those are good spots, man. I would love to sit there. If I ever go to Mexico, yeah. I'm, I'm getting podium uh, stadium seats for sure and we and, and, and it's probably podium. cheap actually going to mexico must be like such a great uh, such a cheap grand prix in general because oh, once you're there you you probably end up i mean your dollar goes a long way i guess oh yeah, yeah I, sure. I was actually planning to go i got you know i applied for it and got invited but uh i started a brand new job back in july and i just couldn't take like nine days off in a row oh, so 100 okay, yeah. for sure yeah i guess the back-to-back -back races messed you up that's awesome, man. Um, <laughs> but how, like, how much fun would it be? Like, it would have been just great. I bet, I bet the Mexican marshals would have been a riot to hang out with. Oh yeah. Well, here, well, here's the cool thing. It was when I was in Texas. I was in Texas a month ago working, working the World Endurance Race and uh, uh, the Tudor Series. Yeah. Oh wow. Awesome. Um, very, very fun weekend. If you want to come to the states for a really fun weekend, that's the one to go to. Oh yeah. Um, you know, because you get. I think we had. World, we had World Endurance, IMSA, Continental Tire Challenge, uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series. Wow! Um, all in one weekend. I mean, it was more wow. more sports cars you could shake a stick at. But um, <laughs> uh, when I was working that weekend, though, I got to work on Friday. I was turn captain at four, and actually got to work with the Mexican guy that was going to be the turn. He was going to be the flag marshal, chief marshal for the Mexican race. Oh, what? So. So, so getting getting to work with him was like I was already in and invited to the race, but getting to work with him was like my 
my permanent invitation to that race. So that's awesome. <laughs> so 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 next year, are you thinking next year? Because I really want to go at least like as a spectator next year. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can work it next year. We'll let's see what happens with the with the year schedule. I'm. Hey. I do IT work and I'm working by myself at this one location, so it's kind of tough that I don't have anybody to fill in for me. So, uh, how about Montreal? Are you planning to head back up to Canada? Oh yeah, yep. I'm already, I'm already, I already got my hotel booked. <laughs> oh, awesome, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> back, back to marshalling a little bit. Like at a typical corner, or are, are, are they all the same? How many how many marshals would you have working in one corner? So you, so um, like you're the blue flag. The blue flag depends guy. on the turn, but like uh, mm. just for an example, like this year for Coda, we had 245 flag marshals. Oh, so all wow. so, at once? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was for the whole weekend. We had 245, wow. which which was nice because last year we only had 200. We had 217 last year, so wow. So so we increased our count by about 28 people, which helped. Um, is that every is that, every corner, every color has its own person? One person per yeah. flight. So, oh, so, wow. so each so each turn has has them. one communicator that's on the radio. Um, our turn our turn captain will be on the backup radio, mm-hmm. oh, and then wow. we have one person <laughs> yellow flag, one person blue flag, um, one person that's they're usually close to the station that's working the LED flag board. Okay. Um, and then we have anybody else's response. So that wow. that so hey guys so that that LED black uh, that LED board that's that's the one it gives you all the information or, or whatever that, that it, it has the SC when there's safety card yeah. the VSC that that's somebody actually is hitting those buttons I thought yeah for whenever whenever there's a safety car or a red flag um, they'll turn that on automatically from race control okay um, mm-hmm. other other than that though those flags those flag boards are the same as us waving the flag so oh. you're, if I'm there controlling that. Um, I'm doing the blue flag. I'm doing the yellow flag, uh, oh, white flag. Because you only have sometimes yellow for one sector, right? That's or true. Like for that's a few true. Corners, whereas the safety car will be yeah. for the whole track. Oh. Uh, and, hey, that and makes so those, much sense. And the way those flag boards work is we they're all set by FIA, FIA rules. So when you see somebody waving a yellow flag for a car go off, you'll see the next station go green. Oh. So the same thing works with those boards. If I have – like when I had uh, – when Kim, Kimmy went off at seven, um, oh my god! Yeah, our our LED board went yellow for for him being off, but then that made turn eight's board go green automatically. Oh, um, okay. That way, the yeah. driver knows when the drivers come through. They know when they pass that green flag or the green board Hit that the they can gas. start racing again. <laughs> yeah. But but um, the, the the key to that though is the flags always take precedent. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, so the wave flags, ha- yeah, okay. So and then the drivers obviously know that, and that's. That's when that's that's why in certain races there's some stewards investigations after the fact and they have to yeah, look yeah. at the well, video. If you, if you can remember Vettel two years ago down in Brazil, uh, when he they accused him of passing under the yellow. Yes. On the last lap or two laps before the end of the race. Right. He he technically passed the waving green flag, but the TSP LED board in the sector was still yellow. Uh, but but because he passed the flag station that was waving green, he was free to race. That's why he got let go. That's why he he, he got yep. let off. Ah, so we learn so much with you, Mike. Every time. <laughs> so, what, what's the rest so, of your, your history for races? Like, where have you? Where else have you marshaled? So we Montreal now. Yeah, I, I did about 65, 70 races for cart over the years since oh. like ninety two. Oh, oh so wow. you, did you come to Toronto at one point or another? I did Toronto three times. Nice. What do oh, you, you think so, of our first city? Oh, I had a blast. When was the last uh, time you were up here? But, uh, between the uh, the, the uh, martinis up in the CN Tower and uh, yeah, nice. the Hockey Hall of Fame. and. When was uh, the last time you made it to Toronto? Last time when I was there was 2002. Okay. Oh, it's, ch- it's changed a little bit since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, where else I remember, you... in fact, a, a fun moment. Um I was working turn 13 there, which not was not really a turn. It was driver's left uh, halfway between start, finish, and turn one. And so uh, I think it was during qualifying. It was Tony Kanaan. Uh, he was in one of the Hondas at the time. And uh, he, came, he came by start, finish, and blew his engine. First time I've seen, seen like, the back of an engine cover in the plenum fly, like, 50 feet up in the air. Oh, you know, wow. And, and it came down and landed, like, right next to us. <laughs> Right, because at, at, at turn one would be like at the end of that straight that goes uh, uh, down what's yeah, uh, what, what in Toronto is the Lakeshore Road. What, what is that called? The, the, the Prin- Prince's Gate. 
Princess Gate. Yeah, it turns into so, uh, the Lakeshore. Oh, the whole complex. Uh, the, it's called the Exhibition Place. Yeah. Yeah, but but yeah, no. I you, actually at at the end of that turn, um, <laughs> Danny here and I, one year a few years ago, must have been what two thousand and nine. We went to the to the Toronto IndyCar race, uh, but instead, <laughs> it was sort of a last, a last minute minute thing. We didn't have tickets, and what we did, we actually went and climbed one of those huge uh, fir oh, trees yeah. that are at the end. We were like 120 feet off the ground, man. <laughs> Best oh, yeah. seats in the house. Not not the first corner though. We were at the uh, second or third, where the oh. where that cement uphill corner is at the end of the long street. Uh, yeah, we were. <laughs> Yeah, we were about uh... so so yeah so for for Carter I did quite a few races I, I so I worked races in uh, Edmonton Vancouver oh wow uh, Portland oh. Laguna Seca Long Beach uh, California Speedway Phoenix worked the three worked the street course in Denver uh, Texas Speedway at Fort Worth uh, Miami Homestead the Miami Bayfront uh, Mid Ohio Road America Meadowlands Nazareth uh, Chicago. And the Houston Street Race. Whoa, there's there's a lot Incredible. of talk about bringing another, bringing back another race in the states, and I think it's basically like between either actually making New Jersey happen or doing something like uh, bringing like an old glorious one like Laguna Seca. Like, which would well, you prefer? The, the, Laguna Seca was the rumor in the paddock at Coda. So right, yeah, but that's, except that's the first for the, I heard of it, and I I couldn't believe I heard that, but it started going around. Crew. So. Well, but yeah, I th yeah, I, th I think the course crew just wouldn't get FIA Grade A approval, but it would be a shame if they let Tilki touch that. Yeah, All yeah, right. they need to they need to keep it the way it is. I mean, obviously, there's a lot there's a lot of things they'd have to do to make it. F one raceable. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's uh, all the dusty. All the runoff is just desert around it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to pave a whole bunch of runoffs. It's, la yeah. it's Laguna Seca. That's what it, that means. It means a dry lagoon in Spanish. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but which which would you prefer? Would you like? Have you seen those videos of of people driving around the proposed New Jersey circuit that we walk in or whatever? Uh, yeah, I've seen a few of the videos, and I think that'd be kind of cool. I, I think I like the look of. Uh, the car is racing down, racing down one of the streets, and being able to see the, see the new, uh, um, the new tower in the background. Yeah, the whole the whole Manhattan behind it. Yeah. So the the Port Imperial Street Circuit, that's what the. the oh, title, that's where they were going with. Is. Okay. Yeah, it's in Weehawken though. Weehawken, New Jersey's the little neighborhood there. And you know, I mean, I know a lot of the neighbors probably won't like it, but you know, they, some of them got to think about how much money they can make off their house for a couple oh, of weeks. Oh yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, I th yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I think that a lot of people like are gonna have some complaints at the beginning, but then once they see it, once they see like how how big of an event it could be, mm -hmm. like people from all over the world coming to see it, they're gonna they're gonna change their mind. If anything, they'll yeah. be like, "All right, property prices just went up." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the, you sure. know, the last I heard, I think about six months ago, is I think I think all the tech pro barriers and equipment from that race in Spain are sitting in a warehouse in Jersey. Oh, so they actually made it across the pond. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ah, because I know that I know that that was the talk that 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 Bernie basically gave them the 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 same barriers from Valencia. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so so that actually happened. Sorry, I didn't know. I thought that that was a rumor because it went away so quickly. But I wasn't I, quite sure if it's, I I still know if it's a rumor, but I know I heard that that all that stuff got shipped over at one point. I'm not sure if it's why, still there or if it got sent someplace else or. Well, and why wouldn't it be there, right? Like, yeah. Why not? Because it was it, the race was about to happen. I hadn't seen that, but yeah, last week I did yeah, a bunch but, of research. The big question now is, you know, Red Bull is going to finance most of it. Now that they're threatening to leave F1, who knows? Yeah, but they're not going to. Do you think they're actually know. going to? Something, something I, I found out. Well, I, I think if they're if they're really leaving, uh, I think Ricky Ardo and Kvyat would have been, would, they would have been shopping for other seats by now. Right. That's a good point. That's a great point. Because yeah. the, the driver's not going to sit around and wait for that to happen. They're going to they're move no, and, and to another team quickly. Especially somebody like Ricciardo that knows that he could get a good seat in another team. You're right. It's yeah, a, you know, a lot of people haven't thought about that. And I was thinking about that on the, plane, on, the, on the plane home the other day. I was like, he's not going to sit there and just wait for them to say they're leaving F1. He's going to... He's going to be out shopping for another seat somewhere. Well, if anything, uh, Christian Horner went out and actually said that uh, he, he he said that he basically announced that their driver lineup is going to stay the same uh, as this year for next year. But he said something like, "If we are still in F one, but ev yeah. I think everybody knows that he's just he's just you know poking the coals in the fire, you know, <laughs> trying 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 yeah. to stir something up. They'll be back with yep. something." For, for you know, for me as a fan, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, come on, come on, Red Bull! It's like you guys, you guys dominated for four years. 
you know, and now you're crying, crying to walk away because you're not winning. It's like, <laughs> give yeah. me a break. They just pulled out fourth and fifth this past weekend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they shouldn't be complaining. They're up there. I, I think yeah. the last I heard today is that they they might just run an un, unbranded Renault engine next year. Yeah, but you know what? About an hour, I just said this uh, 20 minutes ago. An hour, an hour and a half ago, uh, Dietrich Mateschitz came out and said they will not be running any Renaults and that a Honda engine would have been worse for them and that Mercedes and Ferrari are scared. Yeah, but I th- That was his I, statement. I think Dietrich Mateschitz has a bit of a big mouth. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but that's what he said two hours ago. Hey, what are their options, though? They can't. Surely. I mean, they they will be in F1 next year. They have yeah, to they'll, be. they'll be back. Yeah, maybe they can drag an old Cosworth back out of storage and throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like what, like Jean Todd said, uh, was saying that Ferrari better be careful with that gun they're waving. This, <laughs> yeah. The alternate engine is still up in the air, though, and Red Bull have said they'd be open to looking at driving with it the uh the uh, sort of uh the uh indie indie inspired 2.2 liter twin turbo oh yeah oh yeah who would they go for that honda but like the, no the they other... want they want somebody independent from f1 to build it huh. like they said like a well, caterham's t- I, thought, type I thought f1 said that everybody next year customers have to have the same engines as the factory teams but that's right but uh, yeah. well, Jean Todd said that, I guess. Yeah, but they also said that they're still thinking of proposing this if there's no compromise made because they, I think they kind of want to force Mercedes or Ferrari to give Red Bull some engines. <laughs> so such a crazy like such crazy politics. Yeah, do you, it's ridiculous. Do you get the that that atmosphere atmosphere that like intense like crazy like you know that there's clearly some powers that be here uh, when, when you when you do F1 events. Uh. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, we're we're still kind of sheltered like some of the fans are, so it's it's uh mm. you know, we don't hear everything that's going on, but definitely, you know, we do have friends working in the paddock that do overhear people talking about things, so but uh you know, I, I'm actually anxious for the Haas F one for getting Ferrari engines for next year. Oh I my think God. Oh, I yeah. think with uh Grosjean and uh Gutierrez, they could actually be a mid pack team next year, so I think and that's what and if they do, and I really hope that they do, it's it's gonna basically be like an in your face to to so many people like that 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 that, that would have that chose not to come into F one or that or that kept mouthing F one for being um, too expensive, too this, too that, and 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 if Has actually shows up there and he does a great job, uh, yeah, with borrowed parts or whatever, but. Uh, who cares? As long as it's within the, the regulations and he can do it in a cost-effective way, I think that's a, it's a very exciting team. And Roman Grosjean is a pretty good driver. He he managed to get like his crashing under control because that was the only yeah. complaint that anybody had. Yeah. But other than that, he's a very fast driver. He always has been. He's a, he's a fast driver. And my impression of him is that he's always been a good. I mean, not to take anything away from him, but he's a good test driver. He's really good at feedback and giving the engineers the information they need to try to make the car better. Um, you know, if you, if you hear him on the radio every now and then he's, he's really good that way as far as describing what the car is doing or not doing. Absolutely. Something, uh, the Haas team too, as well, could be a catalyst for something like the New Jersey Grand Prix because it, pre, cause it gives you and all of America a team and a driver to, to cheer for. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you and, do uh, have that at Coda right now. Yeah. We got the, the circuit Rossi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the driver, and then there's going to be a team now to also to cheer for. Oh yeah, absolutely. As far as the other races, you got one race. They have one race right now, but yeah, it expands F1 in America massively. Mike, what what do like what do we need to do? Like, what do we all of us, our the community of F1 fans, what do we need to do to convince more people in North America to watch F1? Somehow hack NASCAR broadcast so nobody can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that, do you might th- be, that might be a little bit tough though? I'm shooting a little bit high there, but um, do you think it's portable though? Do you think that 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 NASCAR fans like maybe maybe now with the whole thing with the chase and whatever? I have we have seen a lot of disenchanted fans, and actually <laughs> yeah. last last weekend we we did an well, like Danny was saying we invited a bunch of people to to watch F1 at a bar with us live. Uh, and plenty of people show up, and one of them was an, a hardcore um, NASCAR fan that is disillusioned because he he doesn't like the the whole uh, the chase format, and he, he he basically was looking to see what F1 was about. 
Yeah, I think it's it's hard to say. I mean, I try I try to get as many people hooked as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously the people around that I work with have to put up with me, but uh, <laughs> luckily I went to work at a place where I've, I've, there's a lot of gearheads there. So they, when everybody found out I was going to work F1, they were all like blown away. Wow. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> um, right now I just started to start with the kids. <laughs> you know, True I enough. live here with my sister and my seven year old nephew and. Uh, I've got him completely hooked on F one now. Nice. Oh, great. So, oh cool. So if I there if I can go. change if I can change the direction of one child <laughs> to not to not get sucked into the NASCAR vortex, <laughs> then I've done I've done good. Everybody reach out to your nephews. Yeah. <laughs> so cle- yeah. clearly you're not a fan. You I guess you've never marshaled the NASCAR event. I've done three of them. Um, oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, there's there's really not much to do. I worked ovals, and you just work as a spotter. Oh, okay. um, which is the same thing I did for cart. You know, for cart, we had observers that worked the oval races. And so you're just, you're watching a section of the track for, for infringements, bolts, car parts, rags, whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, basically you're a target. Oh God. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I've, this... I've been, I've been more of a target than I've been helper around, around an oval track. So, oh. <laughs> that's that, that that's funny the the way you put it but yeah i guess i mean yeah obviously the cha- the challenges of 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 the two different kinds of races are completely different but but that's <laughs> uh, so as a spotter you like so sorry you, you you just you watch the same piece of track and you make sure that everybody's behaving or that kind of situation yeah well we just work as observers so we'll watch for blocking calls and we'll watch gotcha. for any any debris on the racetrack because even even as big as f1 is and like indycar is um, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff they leave on those for the mechanics for getting on those cars. You know, really things, like, like things wrenches fall, fall and stuff. Off. Or, you know, this, the slightest bit of contact with anything, you know, they'll, they'll start shedding parts. So <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So it's not, not totally my cup of tea working ovals. I think I actually, I think the, the most fun I had working in an oval was at Homestead. Um, and that was before they raised the banking up for NASCAR. Okay. And, uh, getting to watch the champ cars run around there and they were doing laps of it. I think, I think they were doing like 221, 222 around wow. there. And, That's uh, miles lightning fast. I mean, when you got 29 cars and they're, and they're going, they're doing laps of like 17 seconds. Uh, <laughs> It's it's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Seven a seventeen second lap. That's yeah. that's yeah. Awesome. Seventeen seconds, eighteen seconds. They're doing two hundred twenty two miles an hour. I'm just looking at some uh, photographs of the track. That's it, the one in Miami, right? Yeah. 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 Well, seventeen. You're, you're probably seconds. seeing photos of the of the banking because it has a lot more banking now than it used to. Yeah. So you, I, it I used to be a little bit the, more flat, is what you're saying. It was a lot more flat. Here's yeah. the original. Yeah, you can see there's pictures of the new and old track, how they've uh, raised it up, and then. Here's the new banking. I don't know, and I'll tell you, like you know, like when one of the champ cars hit the wall there. Yeah. That was a big time hit. Um, I think it was Dennis Vitolo. I was working turn three, and I think it was ninety. It was either two thousand or two thousand one, I think. But mm-hmm. Dennis Vitolo hit the wall outside turn three, and when you're doing two hundred twenty one miles an hour, you don't mm-hmm. just stop and turn three. <laughs> he actually slid along the wall all the way around past start finish before he came to a stop. Oh, whoa. I guess so, the brakes completely failed on him. It wasn't so much the brakes. He just he hit the wall and just the, you know the side of the car just scrunched up against the wall and just yeah. I, I, I mean, and that's like when you're a passenger. You had to wait for the car to slow down. Yeah, you're so. just a passenger at that point. Hey, actually, okay. So you you've you've done uh, IndyCar a lot. Like, uh, uh, did you do any IndyCar this year? Uh, just Long Beach. Okay. Th- how how was uh, my 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 countryman Juan Pablo Montoya? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> really? I hear yeah. he's back yeah, to his he, old ways. He had a great year. He, he almost won the championship. I think he missed it by one point. Nice. And he's, I mean, he's uh, getting up there in the years. He's got a, a few gray hairs, but like, I'm glad for him. They had an yeah. interview with him on the F1, Sky's F1 show this past week. It's actually, it, was, it was all right. Oh, he's, interesting. He's, oh, yeah, he's he, a funny guy. No, he, he always speaks his mind. You can always count on him for that. Yeah, he said yeah. he's loving <laughs> racing again, though. Did, did you ever see his replay in... Uh, in Europe, I figure which race it was in Europe that the camera guy bumped into him. Oh yeah, and he just like <laughs> lost it on this dude. Yeah, <laughs> this was uh, he was basically walking up and down uh, or 
just down the paddock um to like i don't know one of the, some some team's hospitality unit and this this cameraman like just really came up close to him and hit him in the head and he was like you freaking idiot you almost broke yeah. my head, <laughs> yeah, oh, broke actually, my head. I, i've seen that clip before <laughs> yeah 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 and then actually the, the ferrari guys had to come over and grab him try to pull him off pull him away oh yeah he was he was about to start a fight <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's you know he was with the williams and all the all the ferrari guys walked over and said hey Juan, come over here and they're like trying to pull him away and <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you'll, you'll like this though. When I worked in uh, Mid Ohio in '99 when he was racing, and um, oh, back in the day, like when he was like b- back in his, his yeah, didn't he, didn't he, he, he win? He, he, he won like three. Year, well, well, he he won uh, three. Cha- he won three championships in a row, didn't he? Back then, uh, I think it was just one because I think okay. he won one and he went back to F1 in, in 2000. Okay, that's that's when he went back to Williams. Right. He was he was sort of um, on, on a loan from Williams. Yeah. to Chip Ganassi. So, so, so basically, you know, Cart then they qualified Friday and Saturday with a guaranteed front row on both days. Yeah. So everybody qualified Friday in the dry, and then Saturday came around and pouring down rain. Big front came through, so nobody wanted to take their cars out. So Juan Pablo gets in, the, in his backup car, the X car, goes out in the rain. Um, one of the best things I've ever gotten to watch was just him driving around in the rain for thirty minutes. He and just... he was only about ten seconds off the pace in the, in the backup car. Wow! In the rain. In the rain. Oh, wow. I yeah, I do remember that, that that he was good at that, and he he was good at like back in those days. I I did watch uh, him in his championship winning year at in, in Indy back in well ninety nine I guess it would have been ninety nine. Uh, it was the cart. Yeah, car, cart. yeah, right in in cart. Um, and and he was just every single race he was involved in wheel to wheel contact racing. Oh yeah. But but he yeah. did it in such a way that he didn't hurt the other guy. It was just straight up racing, and they would kiss tires and everything. But it wasn't to crash. They were just mm-hmm. it was just racing that hard. And actually, the same year you can look it up on YouTube. But '99 Detroit, I was at turn 13, which was, which was a right hander, and then there was another right hander at 14 before they wanted to start finish. Well, go on YouTube and look up his qualifying lap from that race from Detroit '99. Was it nuts? And. That that was the most balls out qualifying lap I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, he still he still holds uh, to this day the or I guess maybe not anymore, but uh, he did clock in uh, maybe in, up up until Mass's recent efforts uh, the fastest clocked in lap in F one uh, two thousand and four oh, yeah. in Monza. Yeah. It's the highest average speed lap. Or something. Oh right, yeah, the, hav- the average the average yeah, the, the highest fastest average. lap, right? Yeah. Yeah. The fastest lap of any driver of any car of any track. No, well, in F1. That, that was, that was in, such in a F1. fast Formula in 1 F1. car. That was, I think that was one of the best cars Williams had. The Williams in 2004, years. yeah. I mean, the, the Ferrari was still, like, a little faster in some tracks, but that Williams was crazy. <laughs> I've watched that clip a bunch of times. With the with the HP sponsorship. <laughs> back, back when HP yep. made printers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I think that was right before when, I think Mark Webber came in, what, like 2003, 2004? Right, right around like there, that. yeah with uh with honda yeah yeah honda back in the day back in the back in those days not this new honda <laughs> yeah so yeah cause i think he went honda and i think he was with he i think he was with uh williams for a year or two oh yeah if i remember right huh how things have changed we were just talking before before you went on um uh, about the uh, the race in 2006 the the that australia 2006 grand prix um how it was the last time that two Ferraris uh, didn't finish a race other than last weekend uh, and how, how just different things were. But at the same time, like some of those drivers are still around and they're still like some of the top drivers. But yeah, Weber was back with Weber, Weber was around back then. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, talking about Ferrari, you know, if we skip back forward to the Coda race. Yeah. I was amazed. I was truly amazed that Kimmy got out of, out of the wall over there. Because oh, yeah. that was right in front of yeah, when he his came, like, I saw him go by. He, he kept was not Jimmy on the racing again? line. And, and I turned my head at my yellow flag. I got the yellow flag up. And I turned around. And I was looking. And I saw Kimmy down the wall. And I was like, oh, what the hell is he doing? I thought, I thought he was nosed in completely. And then, then I could see him wiggling his front, front steering wheel, trying to get the wheels turned. And I could hear the engine revving behind me. And uh, yeah. all of us on the turn were cracking up when he got out of there. <laughs> yeah, everyone was... Yeah, that's hilarious. Now, now, that was, that was good to see. Was, I, was, I was so tired from the weekend that as soon as the race was over, we like packed up and walked out to the buses. Um, I completely forgot that Kimmy went off right there, and I could have walked over, and there was two parts laying there I could have grabbed. Oh, uh, 
You walked out without some carbon fiber, some Ferrari <laughs> yeah. branded carbon some, fiber. Some of, some of the winglets from the front, the front wing. Have you gotten any pieces before any, any races? I've got some leftover Lamborghini or... parts from Laguna Seca. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, I had a when I was doing the IMSA race at Laguna in May. I had a the Lamborg- Lamborghini Super Trofeo series. Um, Blue flagging the lead station, which was, was not the top of the corkscrew, but one station before it. Okay. And driver's right, and uh, two of the Lamborghinis made side to side contact. The one on the right went straight off backwards into the into the um, armco, pushed the armco back about eight inches when he hit. And uh, from my spot, he was still coming uphill. And so for a split second, I was thinking he wasn't going to make it all the way up to me. Mm-hmm. And then tenth of a second later, I was bailing out. And all I could see was just carbon fiber and metal parts and dirt and rocks coming through the fence up towards me. And that sounds he, dangerous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he stopped. He stopped about ten feet past me. Wow. Back end of the car was smashed in two feet. It was totaled. Oh wow. But uh, I have a shot cover from it, and then I've got part of his wheel that broke off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's got to be some of the best parts of marshaling. Get to be right there for those moments, as long as you don't get yeah. hit. As long as you don't get hit. Here's another question that I have, uh, Mike. Sure. Okay, because you know how, especially the TV coverage in F1 right now is is done in such a way that um, there's these long shots where you focus around a, a driver but head on, um, and and they're done in such a way so that there's maximum sponsor uh, exposure of the sponsors of each car, basically. And, and a, a lot of time, all you're seeing is you know the Mercedes going by, and you can clearly yeah. see the Petronas sign or whatever. Um, but there aren't a lot of like shots from either just static in one corner, just to see how each driver approaches each corner, either from above. Or just from head on, like the, the you know the, yeah. the the kind of view that you get, and I'm sure that just just from being there, so close to the corner, you can you can appreciate how each driver um, approaches this corner a little different than than because because they don't all do it the same. A lot of them do follow the same lines, but the, the yeah. approach to certain corners definitely is different. And you can you can some may say that you, you can see the the quality of the driver by the way that they approach certain corners. Do you do you get that feeling by by marshalling? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely on some of the turns I worked. So, like I said, seven was a little bit more difficult, but um, I knew turn seven about 10 minutes into the practice on Friday morning that uh, I told my yellow flagger, because my yellow flagger was looking up track, I said, um, these guys were coming around seven, and they were, they, were, they were fighting the wheel back and forth coming around there. And if any of those guys were going to spin out of six and seven, they were, they were going to go driver's right, like right into our station. Wow. And so I was like, I was like be ready, because I'm watching, you know, he sees my eyes getting big yeah. every other car because these guys are coming around testing the limit around six <laughs> and uh, they're, they're getting one, two feet sideways fighting that wheel coming through there. <laughs> but um, it was interesting though, watching the difference between like the Mercedes, what lines they were taking. Um, Hamilton was, well, from what I could see, Hamilton was much more aggressive in six and seven than Rosberg was. And I think that's where Rosberg got passed. I think like halfway through the race. Yeah, um, the gust of wind. He just wind. didn't look. He just didn't look as comfortable <laughs> going through there as, as Hamilton did. Um, but it is interesting seeing the different cars and the different lines they take and the, their setups and everything else. Because um, you do notice quite a bit once you're watching them for 15 laps at that perspective. Oh, absolutely! I bet it's just it's that's that's unbelievable. Um, I'm and jealous. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think everybody else here is jealous. Um, and he, uh, uh, Mike, you're going to put the work in. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's no need to be jealous really, I guess. Mike, <laughs> l- look into the future. Like what else, what else do you got going on for the rest of the year? My year is done. So, um, I took my lunch hour today and I think I've, I've got my trip halfway booked for Daytona. So cause I, was, oh, I was able to get round trip down there for like 300 bucks. So oh, nice. I got I got to work out lodging and rental car and stuff. So to the 500. No, for the uh, Rolex 24. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No, you're doing it again. Race. Nice. You're marshalling that as well? Yep. Oh, wow. Cool. Which one, which, so, which, which race of the ones that you're doing next year are you looking forward to the most? Uh, for sure, Montreal, because I've had nice. such an incredible time for the past two years. Like, there's no way I can miss that race now. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, hopefully I, we'll see you there. Yeah. We'll be there as oh, well. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing i did last year and fly a fly take the red eye overnight tuesday night and get there wednesday morning and yeah. uh that way i've got two full days to kind of go 
for around, so that's what we did. We we, we got it on Thursday oh, on Wednesday, and and uh, yeah, we got there. Early actually, to, to Mike's point, if anybody out there is uh, considering to ever ever go into the F1 Grand Prix in Montreal, go on Wednesday because the Thursday track, uh, the track walk. Is something that is uh, it, it's you won't get that anywhere else. Shh, don't tell people it's getting packed. <laughs> I, went, I went there three years ago. I was there uh, by myself because you couldn't make it that, right. that year. I was just there the day early by myself, and it was incredible, man. Like they didn't have the uh, those vinyl fences or whatever canvas fence in no, front you, of you. You can go right up. To this I stuff. was right in. Like I got my camera into the brake ducts and stuff of the Force India. I was in their garage talking to the guys. <laughs> it was it was crazy. I got to hold the tire. They're just like, yeah, go go. Ahead. you lift up a tire they'll, but I, I guess it was not pie. it wasn't not anything to do with the weather i think people just didn't know yeah i guess so, so. you know that too, that too for the, you know for the new fans you know like when you watch it on tv i mean we know the montreal track is narrow but i didn't real i didn't realize it was that narrow until i was there two years ago for the first time i was like i couldn't believe you know these guys are doing side by side in some <clears> of these <throat> sections of this track i yes. mean it's only and the wall is right know, there yeah, the wall's right there, and it's like 30, 40, 35, 40 feet wide. So. <laughs> that sections of other tracks are three times as wide in certain spots. Yeah. Yeah. There's their corners, entries, and exits, and certain spots. Yeah, is a... And, you know, speaking of Canada, like we were talking about Mexico with the celebration, could you imagine them doing that celebration down in the hairpin? Oh, my God. Around all the grandstands right there? Oh, my God. Uh, maybe they'll be thinking about it be, because uh, Montreal is going to be doing some renovations over the next two years. They're spending $40 million on facilities there. Mm-hmm. To, uh, run I mean, that'd be race. a great spot for it. With the, you know, I call it, I kind of call it the fish bowl right there because, like, when I'm down there, I've got everybody around me watching. Everybody, so. yeah, it's yeah, true. That, that would be awesome. It's kind of the only problem is it's a bit far from the pits. I think but I th- I that think would be quite quite he, awesome. He, here's it, it, from this conversation, what I can gather is that the next step from F1 is to invest in a mobile podium. Think about it. Yeah, <laughs> you drive it around yeah. the track. Yeah, or just just drive it to like a nice spot on the track. <laughs> Uh, Mike, it's been uh, almost an hour uh, speaking with you. We don't want to take any more of your time. I'm sure you're busy and or tired. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Can we maybe do this again later in the year or early next year? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Good luck with uh, Silverstone. Hopefully you can work that out. And I will definitely see you in Montreal anyways. It's going to be tight. I mean, I can only take so much time off work. True. Um, I do want to do one overseas race next year, though. So I, it's, it's going to be between that, either that or Singapore. Oh, man, Singapore. I oh. heard is amazing, too. That's a tough choice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how the finances work out and how the job works out. So Keep, keep, Go, keep us up luck. to date, and, uh, and, yeah. and, and we'll keep talking. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks yep, for no sharing. Problem. Thanks, guys. See Cheers. You. Have a good night. See we'll you. have a beer in Montreal again. Definitely. <laughs> 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 My My finger, <laughs> how rude My finger slip message him right now and yeah. apologize mike oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah of course we have a beer with him <laughs>